Okay, we'll begin uh, our class. Um, on Monday, I uh, gave you a brief introduction of uh, uh, corporate finance, a brief introduction of the entire semester. Today, I'm going to uh, focus on uh, the introduction of corporate finance. What is corporate finance? This is uh, uh, the topic of today. Okay, lecture outline, corporate finance and the financial manager, the goal of financial management. Uh, there are only two topics to be covered today. Um, up front, uh, I uh, put down number in parentheses. 1.1 uh, uh, is the section number of your textbook, section 1.1. Uh, deals with corporate finance and the financial manager. And 1.3 is the goal of financial management. But uh, where did 1.2 and 1.4 and 1.5 go? Um, you don't have to read. Okay? Uh, that's optional. If you want to read, go ahead and read. And uh, by all means, read them. Uh, they are uh, good uh, stuff. But uh, for all practical purposes of this class, I want you to read 1.1 and 1.3, that's required. And all others uh, that are not listed on this page, lecture outline, every lecture has lecture outline, and uh, whatever that is missing on this page uh, is just an optional reading. Uh, it, it's not required. Okay? This uh, uh, picture. Is, you are already familiar with it because I covered it uh, on Monday. I will uh, have a quick review of this. Let's start with the household sector, uh, what the economists call household sector. Uh, that's consumer investors. You, me, uh, we are all consumers and we are all investors because we consume and we invest. We consume goods and services that are produced by firms. Firms produce uh, and they sell and market their goods and services in the market for goods and services, where consumer investors go and purchase uh, for consumption purposes. So you go to a grocery store and buy uh, produce, buy uh, daily spending items. Um, daily necessities. Uh, you go to a bank and buy or purchase financial services. You go to lawyer's office to buy legal services. You come to Kachan University to get educational services. Okay? Goods and services we are all consuming. Right? Where do we get the money to pay for the goods and services that we consume? Well, we provide our work to the labor market uh, and to the firms, through the labor market to the firms as a labor input. We, pr we provide labor input to the firm's production function. Firms also get capital input from the financial markets. Labor input from labor market, therefore capital input must be from capital market or more broadly financial markets. Firms they mix labor and capital inputs together and arrange and uh, transform. Uh, that process is called production. They produce goods and services that consumer investors will eventually consume. Now, capital input is provided through the financial markets. Financial, cons financial markets consist of markets and institutions. Uh, you are more familiar with financial institutions because they are banks, insurance companies, securities companies, or f asset management companies. Uh, 
you go to those uh, companies, especially banks, to save. If you have any money, uh, it's safe. Uh, if you have, uh, if you want to have ease of uh, paying and settling, uh, you go to a bank and open an account. And from your account, you can send money, you can receive money uh, uh, using internet banking or phone banking or whatever. Or you can go to securities companies and contact the capital market and money market uh, by making financial investments, purchasing stocks, purchasing bonds, uh, purchasing other financial products, uh, such as funds or derivatives. Capital market is for uh, financial instruments that have maturities longer than one year. And money market is for the financial uh, instruments whose maturity is shorter than one year. And capital market and money market together, they uh, comprise the financial markets. And financial markets are contacted by the firms, or they are in uh, constant uh, contact with each other uh, for the firms to get capital input. So this is what uh, we discussed last time. And today, we are going to focus more on this side, firms, from the firm's perspective. Uh, how do uh, firms interact with the financial markets to uh, do its operations? And that's uh, uh, the topic of uh, the following uh, diagram. We are uh, going to be at the center. With, Let's suppose that we are all financial managers of firms. Because okay? assume that you are financial managers okay? uh, in 10 years. Or uh, for some, some of you, it's even uh, uh, sooner than 10 years. And some of you, maybe it's uh, uh, later than 10 years. But sooner or later, you will become financial managers. I want you to have that dream of being financial manager. And financial manager is located right at the center of this diagram, uh, interacting with the financial markets and with the firm's operations uh, in terms of five arrows. Arrow number one is raising cash from the financial markets. Financial managers are essentially dealing with money. It's not all, uh, but it's uh, very important one, a very important component of financial management, raising money or raising cash from the financial markets by issuing securities such as bonds and stocks. Using the money to invest in the firm's operations. Invest in the building, invest in a plant, invest in the machinery and equipment, and invest in human capital, like yourselves. Invest in uh, research and development. They are all investment activity. Financial managers <coughs> invest in assets. And uh, the invested projects, uh, the firm's operations will eventually generate cash. If it doesn't generate cash, then you're in trouble. Okay? Uh, you're supposed to have some cash from your operations. And financial managers receive cash generated from the firm's operations. And then part of uh, the received cash will be reinvested into the firm. The firm needs to go on and on forever. So uh, the company needs additional uh, cash uh, for its operations. So reinvestment plus dividends and uh, cash flow, cash returned to investors. Bondholders will receive, bondholders in the financial markets will receive interest payments and principal repayment. Stockholders will receive dividends. This is the whole picture of uh, financial management. Uh, fr from financial management uh, manager's point of view, uh, you're dealing with 
suppliers of uh, financial resources and the use of financial resources. Sources of financial resources and the uses of financial resources are uh, shown on this diagram. And right at the center of it, financial manager. You are there. Okay. Any questions? Uh, to make it in more uh, systematic, uh, let's say that uh, financial management functions, uh, here FM denotes financial management. Financial management has three different functions, uh, quickly, investment function, and financing function, and liquidity management function. Investment function is uh, to make capital investment decisions. Uh, so-called capital budgeting. The decisions are like how much to invest, which, pro which projects to invest, where to invest, when to invest, how to invest. All these issues are dealt with in this category of capital investment decisions. Sometimes it's known as capital budgeting. Capital budgeting. And the guiding principle of this capital budgeting is to create value. Uh, don't ask me why. Uh, just take it for granted. Okay? Uh, it, it is given. It will become clear later on, but at the moment, this the guiding principle is to create value. So the, the firm or financial manager invests in order to create value. So value creation is the guiding principle or guiding objective. The second function is financing function. Financing how to raise money for the operations. Uh, we, specifically, capital structure decisions and dividend policies are the major parts of financing decisions. How much to borrow, how much dividends to pay, what kind of securities to issue to raise money. And the guiding principle here is to manage risk. And again, don't ask me why. Uh, just take it for granted. Okay? Uh, to manage risk. Uh, the company makes financial uh, structure decision, dividend decisions. Third important category is liquidity management. As I said last time, cash flows in and out of the firm, uh, they don't occur at the same time. Sometimes cash inflows occur uh, without much of capital, uh, cash outflows, and sometimes cash outflows exceed cash inflows. And there is temporary discrepancy or disparity between inflows and outflows, uh, or temporary mismatch. Okay? And when there is shortage of fund, uh, the company will need to have short-term financing. When the company has uh, excess of funds short-term, then the company will have to lend the money to use the money. Uh, those decisions are called working capital decisions or liquidity decisions. Um, cash management credit management, inventory management, and short-term financing are the kind of decisions included in this category of liquidity management. And the guiding principle here is to manage risk of liquidity, uh, to manage the risk of uh, uh, liquidity risk. All three different functions are being uh, uh, the uh, overseen or supervised by one person called Chief Financial Officer, CFO. And typically, CFO is number two or number three person of a company. So if you go up to the rank of CFO, then uh, uh, you are really successful. Uh, you, you are having a very successful career. Chief Financial Officer is in charge of or responsible for financial policy and corporate planning. Under the Chief Financial Officer, there are two uh, positions that are very critical for the functions of uh, Chief Financial Officer. One is Treasurer, and the other one is Controller. Treasurer is responsible for cash management, raising capital, and banking relationships. Treasury is the person to secure money from outside. Controller is responsible for preparation of financial statements, 
uh, accounting and taxes. So both treasurer and controllers are the two essential positions of any firm uh, from finance perspective. Uh, from finance point of view, uh, treasurer and uh, controllers are uh, uh, making decisions that are so essential and critical for the successful company's operation. To uh, make this presentation a little more in detail, let's look at uh, uh, the kind of decisions that CFO makes uh, as far as capital budgeting is concerned. What long-term investments or projects should the business take on? What should, what should we do? As a uh, uh, food company, like Nongshim, uh, other than Shin Ramen, what kind of product are we going to introduce to the market? This, this is the kind of decision that uh, is handled uh, in the capital budgeting category of decisions. Capital structure and dividend policy. How much should the firm borrow to pay for its assets? Uh, specifically, what is the best mixture of debt and equity and the least expensive sources of funds? Another important category of capital structure and dividend policy is dividend policy. How much of its earnings to pay out the shareholders as dividends? What is the optimal payout ratio? How much of its earnings should be distributed as dividends and how much to be retained? How, mu how should the firm pay out to its shareholders? Even if it pays out to shareholders, it can be either in the form of dividends or in the form of share repurchases. Will become clearer uh, later. Just take it as given at the moment. The third category: working capital or liquidity management. How do we manage manage the day-to-day -day finances, especially its cash position of the firm? When uh, I was uh, uh, first out of college, uh, I was working for uh, the Bank of Korea. And uh, Bank of Korea is a central bank, which does not make loans to uh, companies. But during the 70s, Bank of Korea was uh, lending to commercial banks so that commercial banks can lend uh, the money to uh, the companies. And Bank of Korea reviews uh, financial uh, loan applications. Uh, as the uh, ultimate source of fund, funding for uh, the, the companies. And uh, I became uh, familiar with an interesting term. Uh, a company can default uh, even if it is making profits. The company is making profits. It is making money, but it is unable to pay back the borrowing, uh, it's called in Korean, uh, it is making profit, but it goes uh, bankrupt because it was not able to repay the loan. That happens. That's this liquidity management decision, liquidity management failure. The company uh, does make profits over a longer uh, time horizon. But day to day, it runs out of money. Uh, especially for a fast growing firm, it is very essential to manage the checkbook, manage the cash balance. Uh, without managing uh, the checkbook or cash balance, uh, you might run the risk of falling into liquidity risk. Okay? Even if the firm is profitable, the firm can go bankrupt. Remember that. OK, any questions? Again, uh, let's talk about financial manager, CFO. Financial managers try to answer some or all of these questions that I mentioned. Uh, the top financial manager within a firm is usually the chief financial officer. And treasurer oversees cash management, credit management, 
capital expenditures, and financial planning. Controller oversees taxes, host accounting, financial accounting, and data processing. And uh, as recently, um, data processing becomes uh, very fundamental in corporate management, okay? especially big data management. Any questions about the uh, financial manager and financial management functions before we go to uh, financial goals, financial management goals? OK, let's move to financial management goals. Before we uh, talk about this page, I think we'll have to uh, settle with a definition of a term called value. What is value? What is value? Now let me ask, since I have uh, student names in front of me. Okay. Um, let me ask Chong uh, Tonghua. What is value? What do you think is value? Quantity of money that the company makes. Okay, that, that's that's good. That's a good answer. Uh, uh, quantity of money the company makes by doing operation. That's a good source of value of a firm, but that's not exactly the value per se. Uh, anyone wants to uh, give it a thought about what value is? What is value? Uh, if I am getting into this uh, asking mode, questioning mode, then everybody looks at the, <laughs> the notes. <laughs> feel free, feel free. Uh, your answer could be as good as mine. Uh, and my answer is not always the best. Um, Kim kyung -un. Yes. What high profit? Okay, a high profit can be part of uh, uh, value. Uh, it, it can contribute to the value of the firm. Okay, uh, anyone else would like to uh, share your insights? What do you think? Yeah, uh, this we have eye contact. <laughs> I like this kind of eye contact. Okay. Image of a company, yeah, that's good. Image of a company can have good uh, uh, impact on the value of the firm. Okay, uh, anyone else? Notice that none of you uh, was uh, considered wrong answer. Okay, uh, everybody uh, contributed to this. What do you think? Your name? Kim Hyeon. The works of a company. Well, the works of the company. Uh, bring in cash, and that will eventually be reflected in the value, okay? Anyone else would like to share your thought? You are Yo to me. Hmm? Profits, okay, it's, uh, it's similar. Your name? Oh, Kwang Min. Ability of the company. Okay, ability of the company is also uh, uh, the fundamental for creating value. But value is, none of you has defined what value is. And I don't know. <laughs> to be very honest with you, I don't know. I, I cannot describe the exact definition of value. Uh, of course I do. Of course I do. But uh, I don't want to uh, give you my definition of it uh, at the moment. When I ask this kind of question, what is value? It's always difficult to answer. Uh, like, uh, what is love? You know what love is, but you don't know how to describe it. Right? Value is 
in the similar category. Okay? Uh, you know what value is, but you don't know how to describe it in words. Right? Even if I ask you that in Korean, you would have difficulty in answering. It's like, what is love? What is color red? You know what it is, but you cannot answer that. You cannot describe it. For all practical purposes, let me uh, think what I uh, feel that value is. Okay? Value, for all practical purposes, is what you would like to pay for. Okay? Value is what you would like to pay for. Yeah, here is uh, a cell phone. Uh, and this cell phone, this uh, uh, smartphone, uh, how much would you like to pay for? Okay. Uh, one million won? That's the value of it. It's practical thinking. It's not rigorous definition of value. And I'm not going to tell you a rigorous definition of value. Uh, just give you a practical definition of value. Practical definition of value is how much you would like to pay for it. What is the value of this book? Well, that's how much you want to pay for. Okay. So what is the value of Samsung Electronics? That's how much you would like to pay for Samsung Electronics. That's value. Okay. When you pay for something, that Something is called price, right? The price. Price is what you pay for. The price of this cell phone, price of this book, uh, price of this, uh, what is this called? Tumblr? <laughs> the price of it, it, price is similar to value, okay? For all practical purposes, again, uh, let's say that value is similar to or value is approximated by price. Okay? Value and price. We use the term interchangeably every now and then, unless they need to be distinguished. Okay? So the goal of the financial management, since we defined, we have a practical definition of value, let me uh, state that the goal of the financial management is to maximize the value of the firm. Financial manager is making decisions, investment decisions, financing decisions, and liquidity decisions in order to, or in such a way, that the value of the firm is maximized. Do you get it? That's the, defi that, that's, uh, the statement that I would like to make and I would like to feel that that is the right goal or objective of financial management. Of course, there are other goals and objectives, and we'll discuss that when time comes. But for now, the goal of the financial management is to maximize the value of the firm. A corporate financial manager should make financial decisions in order to maximize the value of a firm. I'm, on, uh, I'm a director of a company, and yesterday morning we had a board of directors meeting uh, because uh, shareholders meeting, general meeting of shareholders, Juju uh, Chome, will be held uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, so we had to uh, approve the financial statements uh, to be submitted to the general shareholders meeting. Uh, and uh, in the uh, financial, uh, together with the financial uh, statements, uh, we had uh, annual report showing what kind of investment decisions the company has made. And I asked myself, uh, as a board member, uh, did I do what I teach in class? Okay. I teach in class to maximize the value of the firm. Did I? help make the decision in such a way that decision will maximize the value of the firm. And I asked myself, and my answer was, yes, I did. I did. And I was proud of it. Uh, financial manager, management job is to uh, 
uh, see to it that any decision you are making should be consistent with the maximization of the value of the firm. And if you are not maximizing the value of the firm, then uh, you are not qualified to be a financial manager. Do you understand? Okay. Now, the problem with this objective, this goal, is yeah, it's easier said than done. To begin with, financial uh, value of a firm, value of a firm, value of this firm, the concept is clear, but actually you can't see it. You cannot calculate it. it, it you don't have this uh, easily visible and tangible number in front of you. That's hard. So we have to have practical approximation of this firm value maximization. That's the second line. A practical way to achieve uh, this goal of firm value maximization is to maximize the share price. Because share price is what you observe. You know, Samsung Electronics uh, share price. You know, Korea Electric's share price. You have Postco's share price. You have Hyundai Motors share price. You have Apple's share price. You have Microsoft's share price. You have Google's share price. You have Facebook's share price. Share price is observable. It's, even if it is not tangible, it is observable, visible, right? So it's, it, you can feel it okay, to maximize the share price or shareholder wealth. Shareholder value maximization or share price maximization and firm value maximization, they are reasonably, reasonably consistent most of the time, but not all the time. When the firm value is maximized, shareholder wealth will be maximized as long as debt holders' claims are not undermined. In other words, uh, you can have uh, shareholder wealth maximization and firm value maximization uh, without, without uh, debt holder uh, claim being undermined. Uh, that is to say that um, uh, sometimes it is possible, it is possible that uh, uh, managers making decisions to maximize shareholder value, but that decision decreases bondholder value. That is possible, that is possible. Shareholder value is maximized but debt holder value is reduced, what good is it? And if the company does it, debt holders, bond holders will become uh, mad at the shareholders, mad at the managers. Uh, they will come back and uh, give you a hard time. For example, if you are uh, maximizing share value, share price, uh, at the expense of a bank that is lending you money, then the bank will come back and haunt you. The bank will come back and will make your life miserable. When you need money, the bank might say, no way, I'm not going to lend you money anymore. Because last time, you made a decision to decrease bondholder value. And I cannot forgive you. And bondholders, banks, may come back and give you a hard time. Therefore, uh, uh, shareholder value maximization is a good rule, but so long as it is not detrimental to the bondholder value. Bondholder value is protected and shareholder value is maximized, then it is consistent with firm value maximization. Okay, this I described. The next thing is uh, let's say that firm value maximization is something that you would like to do. Modern corporations are big. Okay? Uh, I'm talking about big corporations. They are really big. Um, and uh, 
the owners of the firm, owners of the firm, uh, owner managers of the firm uh, may not be able to uh, run the company with their own money. So they have to issue common shares to the outside investors uh, to make the company big. So the shareholders, uh, in a sense, owners of the firm and the manager of the firm may not be the same people uh, for a big companies. Let's uh, think about Apple, Apple Computer. Who is owning Apple? Who is the owner of Apple? Eh? Who? <laughs> eh? Steve Jobs? <laughs> uh, uh, Tom Cook. Tom Cook is a manager. Tom Cook is, uh, uh, is it Tim Cook or Tom Cook? Tim Cook. Tim Cook is a manager. He's, he's a CEO, OK? Uh, he's a chief executive officer, but he's not the owner. How about Samsung Electronics? Who is the owner of Samsung Electronics? Egoni? No, he's not the owner. I used to hold 10 shares of Samsung Electronics, and I said that, that I am an owner of Samsung Electronics. I'm a partial owner. Okay? Going back to Apple Computer, Apple Computer was founded uh, maybe by Steve Jobs, and it is currently managed uh, by Tim Cook, but it's not owned by Tim Cook. It's not owned by Steve Jobs. Microsoft is not owned by Bill Gates, although it was founded, and uh, under him, it uh, really prospered. But he's not the owner. Owner is the shareholders, all the shareholders. They have partial ownership, all the shareholders. So Apple shareholders own the firm. Apple management, management is making decisions on behalf of the shareholders. Apple management is maximizing Apple's value. And therefore, shareholders of Apple computer will become better off. Okay? Do you see the structure of it? now? Here's a company, Go uh, Hyeryeong. You are uh, one of the major shareholders. You are one of the major shareholders. You founded the company. And suppose, let's, let's assume that uh, treat her uh, with honor because she has founded a big company and she hired me as a CEO. So I'm working under her. She owns a firm, and I'm working on behalf of her, right? She asked me, uh, Mr. Choi, do, do whatever you would like to do to maximize the value of the firm and to maximize the value of my holding of shares. Okay? That, that's clear? Now, immediately I come back from a meeting with her, uh, I looked around and say, well, my office is too small. I would like to have a bigger office. Uh, I would like to have my office uh, carpeted with a uh, five-inch carpet instead of uh, uh, the, cheap, the cheap carpet. I would like to have my office uh, decorated with uh, expensive paintings. I would like to have uh, uh, the top of the line Bentley uh, automobile as my car instead of uh, Genesis. And Genesis is too too small for me. Uh, I'm a big manager of uh, uh, Go Hye Ryong's business, so I want to have uh, enjoy this uh, big management perks, perquisites, the so-called perquisites. All right, and. Uh, since I'm a CEO of uh, Go Heyang Incorporated, uh, I would like to uh, have golf club membership, uh, very expensive golf club membership, and I play golf. Uh, and uh, 
I would like to have my personal chef cooking for me uh, Italian cuisine all the time. See, do, do, do you see what I'm getting at? Uh, I, instead of maximizing her company's value, I am maximizing my utility of uh, enjoying my perks. Okay? That happens. That happens. Managers are not always acting in the best interest of the owners. If that happens, if that happens, managers are not maximizing the value of the firm. Is there a way to control those managers to maximize the value of the firm? And the answer is yes and no. Yes, there are ways, but those ways are not perfect. And uh, there are costs involved with it. And those costs are called agency cost of equity. And uh, the idea of agency cost of equity are well explained in uh, the chapter, uh, in the sections that I said optional. So if you would like to read, go ahead and read and enjoy uh, the concept of this uh, management objectives and shareholder objectives are not coinciding with each other. Right, any questions or comments? Now here are some alternative financial goals for the management. Uh, some people say maximize profits. Some say minimize costs or maximize market share. All these are valid uh, companies' goals, but they are not necessarily consistent with firm value maximization. Uh, and they are inferior to firm value maximization because, because profit maximization or cost minimization or market share maximization, they are not reflecting the timing, magnitude, and riskiness of the cash flows of the firm. But timing, magnitude, and the riskiness of the value of the firm, uh, riskiness of the cash flows are critical components of firm value. Firm value is determined by the timing of cash flows. It is the magnitude uh, also determines uh, the value of the cash flows. Uh, and risking of the cash flows is also contributing to uh, firm value. Okay. Um, none of other goals reflect the timing, magnitude, and riskiness of cash flows. And therefore, I urge you to think that uh, firm value maximization is the most desired goal of financial management. This is not a rigorous proof, but this is a, a practical uh, proof uh, why firm value maximization is a valid uh, goal for financial management. Any questions or comments? OK, firms of business organization. There are three different forms, sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. But uh, you read. Okay. Uh, advantages and disadvantages of uh, corporation, you read. The agency problem is the one I talked about. Okay. Management maximizing uh, his or her own personal utility uh, as opposed to firm value. Okay. OK, that's uh, about all uh, that I would like to discuss with you in class. Uh, finally, project pre preparation. Uh, one of you uh, came to me and asked uh, to uh, describe this in more detail today. So I'm going to do it. Um, again, by Monday, uh, by Monday, you will have to have a group formed a group of six people, and uh, each group will work together. Okay? Uh, six people will work together, but submit separate reports. The, each person submits report. Okay? Each person report, submits report. And there are a total of 10 segments, and maybe more or maybe fewer, but uh, about 10 different segments. And all 10 of them will have about 60 to 70 pages in total. Okay? 
by the end of the semester, you will have uh, a thick document, uh, a portfolio of uh, the project reports. And that will become a good uh, piece of uh, uh, information that you can show off to other people. I've done this. I'm capable of doing financial analysis. Right. Uh, this decide your team member and uh, uh, decide which company to analyze. That's by Monday. You don't have to tell me which company you have done it, that you, have, you are going to do. Just uh, do this by Monday so that you will be able to hand in the first segment, uh, which is due a week from today. So you don't have much time. Okay? For uh, the first segment, uh, students in each group should work together to collect data and to discuss what to do. But each student should submit by Wednesday, March 11, one page description. I said one page description, but it could be two or three, but short. Okay. Don't make it 15 page uh, uh, report for the first segment. If you write 15 segment report, then the, the ones that follow will have to be uh, 50 pages long. So that, that's too much. Okay. Uh, very short description of the company, its name, the industry it belongs to, the list of senior management. Senior management, by this I mean CEO and CFO. Only two will suffice. The stock exchange where its stock is listed, the listing date, its stock prices, year-end stock prices for the last three years, um, and uh, its dividends, per share, and earnings per share, dividend yield for the past three years, um, and some other relevant, which you think relevant, can be included. Uh, your report can be in either the Word format or the PowerPoint format. This is part one of your project. Okay? Part one, again, is due exactly a week from today. Is it clear? Okay. Uh, part two uh, will be due two weeks from today. So uh, the due dates are coming uh, almost every week. So you have to be prepared. Uh, always uh, be alert uh, to uh, make the deadline. Because if you fall behind in one report, then you will be falling behind throughout the semester. And uh, you will never recover. Uh, I guarantee it. So uh, be sure to. Uh, uh, make the deadlines, uh, finish it in time, and uh, upload it in the, uh, uh, the report section of e-class. If, in addition, if you would like me to make feedback, submit to me, it's an optional, submit to me a hard copy, and I will write in red uh, a few comments. Uh, strike this, this one is necessary, do this more. Uh, short remarks I can give to you uh, so that you know that you are on a right track. OK, any uh, questions about the, the project? OK, yes. Uh, yeah, if you want to make a group name, uh, by all means, by, oh, that's a good idea, that's a good idea. Uh, uh, make a group name, group, group name. Since each group has six members and six members will be uh, analyzing different companies, you have to have a group name. Uh, company name cannot be uh, good for it. So group name. Uh, and write your name and parenthesis group name. Okay, that's how you uh, submit your report. Uh, it doesn't have to be a paragraph. It's a uh, uh, PowerPoint. Uh, it doesn't have to be a f full sentences. Okay? Uh, make, uh, make your decisions. Uh, your judgment can be as good as mine. OK, now is, uh, we have 10 minutes left, and it's time for you to
ask me uh, questions in whatever the language you feel comfortable with. And I'm going to